Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the rifle that you see in my hands and that you saw throughout the intro. It is the Daniel Defense DDM4 B7. So this one here has the MLOC handguard as all the B7s do. Uh, it's available in a couple different finishes. It's also available with a couple different barrel profiles. So the B7 that we have here has the government profile and then the uh, there's also a lightweight version I should say. This one has the cool sort of uh, FDE burnt bronze type of coloration that Daniel Defense calls their mill spec plus finish, but they also offer, I believe, tornado, they call it, which is gray, and then also a deep voyage, which is sort of like an off OD green type of finish. So different finishes, different barrel profiles are out there, but uh, basically the V7 series is all gonna have the same MWAC handguard, and it's gonna have a lot of the same interior components that we're gonna talk about here in just a second. But before we do that, we're gonna let the dogs take a look at it, of course, then go out and shoot some groups with it. After that, we'll come back in and basically go over all those different details that go into making this rifle what it is. Time to see what this rifle can do accuracy wise. So just the setup here before we actually get into it, we have the CTK Precision Rest here, super high speed tactical sock, uh, sandbag. And then uh, on the rifle, we have a Trigicon 2.5 to 10 scope with a, uh, this is an American Defense Industries 30 millimeter recon mount. Now uh, it is just the regular trigger as it ships with the rifle. So GI trigger target down range at 100 yards. We got a few loads we're gonna run through for you. Uh, first up, we're gonna run a 5.56 load. This is the uh, Federal 77 grain OTM round 5.56 chambering, so heavy for caliber. I know this round's really popular for uh, home defense. A lot of military units like it as well. Uh, a lot of people like it for hunting. So we'll see what this, uh, this barrel will look, do with it. Well, I don't think we're gonna beat that group today, but who knows? Anyway, uh, that was really, really good. Uh, better than I expected. So right now we have some uh, Gorilla ammunition. This is their 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg load. Um, so it's a light per caliber load. This is a 223 chambering. And uh, this one's been consistent across the board. They have a discount code for viewers that you will see in the bottom of your screen. We'll see how it does. Doesn't look too shabby either. The last load we're gonna run through it is some uh, 77 grain uh, hollow point bullet tail bullets from Freedom Munitions. These are 223 chambering. Also, thanks to them for giving a uh, viewer discount code as well, which is also in the bottom of your screen. Not too bad, let's go measure them. Hopefully this and many other of my videos put the rest the idea that chrome wine barrels can't be accurate because uh, we certainly just disproved that. So first up, that federal load. Man, that's tight. For about five eighths of an inch, just a touch over half an inch. Uh, then we moved over to the gorilla load, 55 grainer. You know, in theory that shouldn't be accurate. According to some folks on the internet, we're right at an inch center to center on that one as well. So another good group. And over here with the uh, 77 grain freedom munitions, three of them go in one hole. And uh, again, we're right at, we'll call it an inch and an eighth, inch and an eighth. It's not quite an inch and a corner center to center, but those are some good groups right there. Those would be good groups from 
I mean, that would be a good group from a match barrel. Never mind a cold hammer forged chrome mine barrel like we have here, um, you know, with a regular profile. So, no doubt about it, the rifle can shoot. Now that we've seen how it shoots, we'll get into the actual details of the rifle itself. The flash hider that it comes with is Daniel Defense's proprietary flash hider. You guys can see there it has those sort of elongated ports all the way around, and then it is closed on the bottom just like an A2 would be to prevent any sort of dust kicking up if you're firing in the prone. But it is going to give you some compensation and a pretty good flash hiding just like the A2, just a little bit better as they elongate it. Now that piece is actually nitrated and made by Daniel Defense in-house. Continuing to move back, we have the barrel that you guys just saw, how well it shoots. It's a Cold Hammer Forge 4150 CMV steel, and then it has a chrome lining. It's a mid-length barrel, and it does have a 1 in 7 twist. A gas block underneath there is 4140 steel, and then it is pinned down to the barrel, which is something I know a lot of folks certainly like. Now, the profile of the barrel is government profile. Um, in my opinion, it's uh, generally speaking not going to be the best profile for all around use, but as you guys saw, it shoots well, and uh, there certainly are worse profiles out there, at least in my opinion. The V7 rifles come with Daniel Defense's MFR handguard. This one here is the 15-inch version. And, of course, we have M-Lock slots all the way around and then several different QD points. So you have it here on the uh, 3 and 9 o'clock position. Then you also have it here up here on the top. And basically that's going to allow the rifle to hang a little bit more naturally, at least in my opinion, if you're using the QD sling swivels there. So it's made out of uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. This one, of course, has the Cerakote finish on it. However, if you guys just get the plain black one, which I think most people probably will do. Uh, it's going to be uh, type 3 hard anodized on there for you guys. So you guys can see the lockup system and sort of how it works here on the back with the receiver. We have the four screws there. And some of the earlier V7s, at least from what I've read online, um, these went out without the uh, screws being locked headed down. I removed this to take some of the photos that you guys have seen so far. And happy to report that mine did have some thread blocking compound on there. So it does appear that they remedied it. But I do like the design overall with uh, different QD points. And then it sort of uh, is beefy here with this system right around the barrel nut, which is the part that a lot of torque and flexion is put on. If you're say like running a sling and torquing it down real hard or maybe a bipod or something like that. So they did beef it up there in that area to make it more secure. And all in all, it seems like a pretty sound system. The upper receiver is made of forged 7075 T6 aluminum. As you guys can see on top, it does have the T markings all the way down and does have our forward assist, which I do personally like. And one thing a lot of people have questions about is this polymer dust cover. So according to Daniel Defense, the reason they went with polymer versus the standard aluminum one is that it resists deformity better, so they say, and it's also 11 grams lighter, so it saves a little bit of weight. Now, I don't have a problem with it. It's functioned just fine, as you would expect in all of my shooting here with it. And some folks may not like it because it's not traditional, but as long as it works and prevents dust from going in and uh, keeps particulates out, I don't have an issue with it, especially if it's going to save me a little bit of weight. So. Inside the upper receiver, you'll note that there is M4 feed ramps cut into there, and they are blended with the M4 feed ramps on the barrel. Along with the barrel, the bolt carrier group is sort of the heart and soul of the rifle, and Daniel Defense makes a good one. Uh, the carrier here is made out of 8620 steel. It has a phosphate finish on there. It does have the full auto profile, as you would expect. We have a little DD logo there on the side. The inside portion where the bolt rides is chrome lined, as is the gas key. Gas key is made out of tool steel, and it has good staking on the, uh, the key there, as you would expect uh, from Daniel Defense. The actual uh, charging handle is made of Forge 7075 T6 aluminum, and it has the uh, hard anodizing there. Um, and then our bolt is 158 carpenter steel. It's what it's made out of. And then it is high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. So basically, they fire a proof round through it and then do the magnetic particle inspection to make sure there's no micro fractures or anything like that in the bolt itself. And uh, then it has that phosphate coating on the outside. This one here is starting to wear, but that's basic uh, good use that you see there. So the extractor is mill spec in terms of materials, and we have the O-ring and the black insert in there, as you guys can see. Just like the upper receiver, the lower is made out of Forge 7075 T6 aluminum. It is uh, type 3 hard anodized, and of course with this coloration we have the uh, Cerakote over the top of it. A couple things I do like about it, we have that nice flared magwell 
I've said it in many, many reviews here on the channel. There's no reason not to do that at all. So I do appreciate that Daniel Defense is actually doing that. And then the grip and the stock here are made of a um, glass-filled nylon polymer, sort of like a Zytel type material that Daniel Defense uh, makes in-house. It does have the rubber overmold here on the grip and then on the stock. So uh, let's get into each of those first. The grip has a nice uh, sort of vertical angle, which is becoming more popular uh, for AR-15s these days. It also has an integrated trigger guard here. So that way you don't have to worry about like uh, tapping roll pins through if you were to actually assemble or disassemble the rifle. Um, I find it to be pretty ergonomic overall. I wish it didn't have that little finger bump because my finger here kind of rests on it. Um, otherwise, it's, it's certainly good to go. It's certainly better than an A2. And the stock here, I like. Um, I've heard some people say that it can grab beards. Um, even when I've had facial hair throughout the time I've been shooting this rifle, I haven't noticed that to be an issue. Uh, the adjustment lever here is up front as opposed to a lot of them that are going to be right here. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it there, it's just fine. We have uh, cutie sockets on each side. If you guys want to use those, we also have a cutie uh, end plate here where the uh, castle nut mates up with the receiver. The stock itself has a nice sloping angle that I've talked about in several reviews that I do like. It just sort of helps the rifle roll into your shoulder a little bit. So all in all, that's certainly good. The receiver extension is 7075 T6 aluminum, uh, mil spec six position adjustable buffer tube. Uh, the castle nut is staked down. It's not as aggressive as staking as some people would like, but it did, it did move a little metal over, so we'll give them credit for that. Uh, the buffer itself is an H buffer in there, and then it has the standard mil spec carbine spring. Our Safety here is ambidextrous, as you guys can see. So lefties out there rejoice. You don't have to uh, worry about running those AR controls for right-handed shooters. And the trigger is nothing to write home about, but as you guys saw, if you shoot and do the fundamentals properly, it will work just fine. But in terms of pull and function, it's mil spec in every way. It breaks right at five pounds on my scale. And uh, it's got a clean break like most AR triggers do, and a nice positive reset as well. We've covered a lot of details so far, but we left a few out. So uh, number one, it comes with a case, a manual, and a magazine. It's one of Daniel Defense's uh, 32 round mags that I've tested here in the past, and they've passed with flying colors. Very, very good magazines overall, so I do recommend those. Um, it does not ship with sights, so as you see it right here is how it comes. And in this configuration, it weighs 6.2 pounds. So um, when I actually picked it up the first time, I was expecting it to be a little bit heavier due to that government profile barrel, but it seems that they did pretty well in terms of weight savings, even with a 15 inch handguard on there. So it's not too heavy, not too front heavy, but of course when you load it down with stuff like we all like to do with ARs, it can get a little heavy. So um, that is what it weighs. In terms of reliability, we have had a grand total of zero malfunctions. It has been flawless, it's eaten everything we fed it, uh, whether suppressed or unsuppressed, and uh, we put a pretty steady diet of uh, free munitions, remanufactured ammo through it about 2,000 rounds of that, and then about 400 rounds of Perfecta, and then just the match stuff that you guys saw out there at the range. So, I mean, you really can't complain about that. Uh, flawless function in terms of reliability is exactly what you want and sort of what you'd expect from Daniel Defense as well. So uh, the thing that you guys, I'm sure, all want to know is going to be price point. So these rifles aren't cheap at all. I think if you look around on the internet, basically they're going to be running you 1450 to 1650 depending on where you pick one up and in these days you know when you can get budget ARs really cheap uh, a lot of people ask you know who would buy that type of rifle for that type of money well my opinion um, it's one of the best in terms of uh, brands and models of a sort of go to war serious fighting guns out there on the market um, you know there's other good ones but this one is as good as any of them out there in my opinion so it's very very high quality rifle with high quality components in every little facet so they don't like skip and and dink and dime on like lower parts kit stuff for example it's only high quality mil spec or better stuff so that certainly is part of what goes into it of course like i said the cold timer forge chrome line barrel daniel defense makes those in-house from start to finish um, they're one of only a couple facilities in the country that has that capability to do it and their quality control seems to be pretty good in that regard as you guys saw out there with those groups so Overall, it's a very good rifle. It may not be for everybody, and that's okay. But for somebody who wants a sort of 
end of war, uh, without rule of law type of rifle. Um, this one is definitely one I would take a look at for sure. If you guys have any questions about the rifle that we didn't cover here in the video, you can always post down below in the comment section as always. You can also post over at my Facebook page, which generally is the best way to get in touch with me these days. I don't always see my comments and messages here on YouTube or Full30, but I see most of them over there on Facebook. So. That's about it guys, thanks for watching. As always, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel and you like what you saw, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and look forward to seeing you in the next video.